Hello everyone, my name is Don Glass and I'm going to show you how to make a reading log on Google Docs. You see an example in front of you. When the students fill this out, it will be sent to you in the form of a spreadsheet that looks something like this with all of the questions answered. The first thing that you need to do in order to create one of these is to create a document. I usually use Microsoft to Microsoft Word to create a document and your document needs three things. Title of your form, instructions for filling out the form if you have any special instructions, and the questions or distractors and distractors if you have them. Basically you need to just create a written form of your document. You may already have a written form of a, a reading log that you've used that is paper-based and it's fairly easy to convert that and I'm going to show you how. Okay, once you've created your document, Here's an example of a document that has all three items. You see the title, instructions, and the questions. You'll notice that I haven't put numbers in front of the questions. I suggest not putting numbers in front of the questions um, simply because it's easier if you don't, and uh, perhaps you'll see why. Um, to start, you need to get to Google Docs, and the easiest way to do that is through Gmail. Go to your Gmail account, and you do need a Gmail account in order to use Google Docs. And then click Documents. Documents will open up a list of the documents that you've created before. You need to click Create New and Form. One more time, that's Create New and Form. That will bring up the template that you need in order to create the form. First thing that you want to do is get your document up here and then transfer your title into the empty space. Yeah, at this point, I suggest going ahead and saving it right away so that you don't lose any information. Next you need to put in your instructions if you have them and they fit into this box. Um, there's really not a limit to the amount of information that you can put in here that I've seen. Um, then you need to start your questions. Now the first question you click on edit and then you simply drag and drop your question into the box. If you have any helping text, drag and drop that as well. I like to make sure my students spell their name the same way each time. Sometimes they don't, or they put in a different name. Uh, you also want to click on Make This a Required Question so that it forces the students to answer the questions. If you don't do that for this one, obviously you get reading logs without names on them. And who, can, who likes that? Uh, next, student number. First thing you need to do is click on edit. I would remove this first. Click on and drag. Drag and drop. Again, this is a text based question, so no need to change that. Make it a required question, and you're done. Now, for the next one, you can see there's nothing down here. There's no more sample questions. You need to go to the top right here. Click add item. And you choose from a list the type of question that you want. Okay, I don't have time in this lecture to cover all of the different types of questions, but I think if you play with it a little bit, you'll find that it's not that difficult. Uh, multiple choice is the type of question I need next, so I can force the students to choose one answer. And again, drag and drop. Uh, what I would do on this is since you have eight options over here, I would go ahead and click this eight times so that you have eight boxes. So you have eight boxes already up. That makes it easier and quicker to drag and drop. Notice that on this I put week one, week two, week three, but in front of that I put one, two, and three. 
Uh, this is just for purposes of the spreadsheet. It makes it easier to manipulate the data. Once you've transferred all of those, you can click Make This a Required Question. Done, and you've created that question. Uh, the next type of question that we have is a question that requires another text. You could put a paragraph text because some URLs are very long, but I've never had any problems with URLs fitting into the text box as it is. It just doesn't show completely. Make it a required question, and there you have it. That's that easy. Now the next two questions are asking students to summarize and give an opinion, so I'm going to make the next two questions paragraph texts. And again, simply drag and drop. Once you've finished dragging and dropping all of the questions, you need to make sure that you've saved, although it would probably be better to save several times, especially if you're new at this and you're starting to do it slowly. And you can see that it's saved. The last thing that you want to take care of is a theme to make it look nice so that when students access it online, they see something that looks interesting. Um, we could try uh, Books Modern and we see what our form would look like if we use that form, that theme. But I'm not really crazy about this, so I'm going to change to a different kind. I can simply cancel, go back to the list, and choose something that I think will work better. Yes, that looks much nicer, I think. So I'm going to apply. Now basically I finished creating my online reading log and now that it's saved I should be able to go back to Google Docs and I should see it sitting here. If I click on it, it brings up the grid, the spreadsheet that students information will come to when they fill out the form. Now, whenever I want to send the form to the students, I can do that in one of several ways. And actually, I do it in several ways because it just seems like it's easier to get it out there to them so they have it in many different ways. Um, first of all, if I want to send the form, I can send it to each student's email. Again, click on send form, put in the email address, and send. It will be sent to that person's email box. Not that one, that one. And this is what the email looks like that gets sent to your students. It has the form actually in the email, which makes it convenient for them if they have access to their email. And it also has the form in a link so that they can fill it out online if they have any problems with that. And later you can learn how to use a QR code so that you can post the link in your class so students with smartphones can get it onto their smartphones as well. Now once the students have access to this again they will fill out the form and when you're ready to look at it you click on online, re online reading log and you get their answers in this form. If you find that you need to edit your form or add more questions, simply go to Edit Form and it will bring up the template so that you can make any changes that you need to make to it. Save them and then you're done. Another helpful thing is if you're sharing this information, uh, if you're sharing the spreadsheet with another teacher or an administrator, for example, or even if you're sharing information with a student, you can go to Share, and wait, <laughs> and click Share, and then put the information, the email information for the people that you want to share this with. You have a choice with this of either edit, just they can edit the information on the spreadsheet or only they can view it. For example, if you're sending it to an administrator, you may only want that administrator to be able to view it. But if you're sending it to another teacher with whom you're working and they may need to manipulate the data, you'd want to put it in as change. 
click share and save and it will send that person an invitation if you want to see the form you can go to live form this will take you to the online version of the form in your URL box above you will be able to uh, save the link if you want to do that as well Again, edit the form, send the form, go to a live form. And this will also show you how many people have received your form as well. You can embed it into a web page if you want. And there are lots of different things that you can do with the document once it's uh, once you've started having students fill it in. Um, that'll be for another screencast. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, there will be other screencasts showing you different methods. Just keep an eye on www.gdocs number four readinglogs.wordpress.com, and you'll be able to see other examples.